Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy, Cool Ya P of the Show Pal Show. Before we get to this week's episode of the Show Pal Show, I want y'all to check out this amazing festival that I'll be collaborating with my folks over at the Mix Asian Media Festival. Here we go right now. Check it out. In 2017, we launched Hapa Bag, inspired by my blog, Miso Hapa. For many of us, it has come to represent a space for us to express our mixed racial heritage with Asian or Pacific Islander ancestry. To be Hapa is to be a part of a diverse and growing community with many perspectives. In 2021, we made the decision to move to a broader future by renaming ourselves Mixed Asian Media, MAM for short. In celebration of this re-identification, we present the first Mixed Asian Media Fest, MAM Fest, a glimpse of Mixed Asian and Pacific Islanders in their art forms, including art, film, theater, and dance. In light of recent events, MAMFest will be an online event. However, we're hopeful that future years will allow us to meet in person and gather in physical space. And have a creative project? Submit to MAMFest on filmfreeway.com. going on this is the noc the nerds of color and we are back with another show pal show it's your boy cool ya p aka the holla holla homie of the cine gang gang in a tocino terminator but i can't do this alone without some of my dinagon dinaguan destroyers you know the sasig supremes um the amazing ates however we're minus one ate but today i have miss catafork how are you today girl hey, doing good glad to be here as always Yes, yes. Good to see you. And we miss you, Tina, but you'll, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll mess with you now because you miss on this great one we have today. It's going to be a dope one. I'm super excited because we're going to we're actually recording this a couple days prior, but we're going to launch this on the day of this amazing new Disney Plus series starring uh, uh, a dream boat of mine. I got to say, you know, I love basketball. It's, it, it centers around basketball, but Uncle Jesse, Full House, John Stamos, y'all. Um, it, it's led by him, but it's introducing a, a great new cast of young emerging talents. Um, and I'm so super excited to have one of them because she's Panay. She's representing for our people, our culture. And, you know, that's what we're all about. So, Kat, you ready? You ready to bring her in? So hype. So hype. Let's do this. Ready. All right. Air horns. We're blaring them. Here we go. Tisha Castillo. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey. Great to have nothing you. much. I'm really excited to be here. Welcome, welcome. Yes, yeah, so delighted. Thank you, and girl, yes, welcome. Uh, we can't wait to get into a little bit of your story and talk about Big Shot because now, hey, brush some shoulders off. You're a big shot now, y'all. Oh, <laughs> You're here. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. So, yeah. So I'm gonna toss it to Kat 
uh, with our first question out the gate. Let's go. All right. We always like to start off with, so where are you from? Wait, I mean, where are your parents from? Perfect. Um, well, I'm actually from Bacolod City, from the Philippines. Um, I was born there. My parents were there. Um, I still have family there. Um, I immigrated here when I was three because my mom had a, um, she got a new job in America. Um, she's a nurse and that's why I'm here. Awesome. Excellent. Nur uh, uh, Filipino nurse mom, all part of that, that great Amer Philam story, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what was like that transition for you uh, if that you can recall? Um, you're still probably very, er you know, you're three, right? You're still probably early on, but what did your parents tell you about kind of like that transition from, you know, moving over and, you know, uh, you know, growing up uh, here in the States? Yeah, it was a little hard at first because my mom actually had to move to America six months before my dad and I could move. Um, so I just remember my dad going, I, you really missed your mom during those times. And you, you really wanted to like hug her, like whenever you saw a mom and a daughter, like just walking around. Um, but I, <laughs> I remember just immigrating here. And the first thing we did was go to uh, Disneyland. And we just did all the touristy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing up, I grew up in Orange County. Um, it was just a very safe neighborhood. Um, and there are just a lot of Filipinos there. There are a bunch of like Filipino um, restaurants and grocery stores. So it just felt like a family reunion wherever I went. Amazing. So it kind of felt like you really never left, right? In a way? Yeah, basically. That's, that's awesome. I, I love that. You know, so uh, I because I, I didn't grow up around that. I had to get it with little aunts and uncles here and there. So to the fact that you had that, you, you can get close to your culture was beautiful. So what did you, um, you know, so growing up there, you had your family there and you're living in the States, but you had like this large Filipino presence. When did you realize you were Filipino? Like and, and like just that, that mix of cultures. And did you take pride in that at first? Because, you know, sometimes we, we feel different because we're not always portrayed in media. So we don't realize that we're Filipino. Um, and that's why we explore with this show. How was that for you? Um, I basically knew that I was Filipino from the start because my family is just very, very into the culture and we're very proud to be where we're from. Um, and it was a little hard because um, I grew up in Orange County. It was a predominantly white um, city or like county. Um, so <laughs> I would bring all of these Filipino foods to lunch and they would just stare at me. And I was like, oh, wait, this isn't normal. Um, so that was like my first realization that I wasn't completely Filipino, but I also wasn't completely American. I was just in this middle. Yeah, I feel that. But you still had, regardless of that, because a lot of us, you know, get worried and we kind of close in, but you you embraced it. Awesome. Yes. I love it. So what would your parents tell us about a young Tisha around um, this time? They, <laughs> around this time. Um, just growing up. Okay, um, they would say that <laughs> I grew up just, all of my family members would ask me to sing a bunch of princess songs <laughs> when we had like karaoke parties. Um, so I just like, yeah, that was like my first introduction to whatever, performing. And Love that it. kind of like sparked my interest in like Leia Salonga, she's like my idol. Yeah. Because she's, yeah, she's, the only person that really looked like me that I wanted to be, you know? I um, yeah, I also, I, I think I, I just always wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but my mom just kept pushing me to be somewhere in the medical field. Oh, so you are already <laughs> getting it. That, that's a big thing yeah. we talk on the show, pal show is, you know, we are, a lot of us want to be entertainers. We, you know, we have that love to, you know, share ourselves with our people whether through dance or film acting and uh but yeah but then we kind of get pushed to the more responsible route if you will you know right like accounting and all that so that's beautiful though so but you got to enroll in the orange county school of the performing arts so they did kind of let you do your thing for a little bit can you talk about that yeah uh they 
<laughs> they let me go to that school because they essentially thought it was a hobby at first and that it would a phase and I would grow out of it. I would like go to college to be like a psychology major or whatever. But it did the complete opposite and it made me love acting a lot more. And that's just, it's the reason why this is all I want to do now. And yeah, when I booked this show, that's when they were like, oh, this is an actual job. You can do this. It's fine. Awesome. I love this like Disney thread, you know, Disney yeah. kind of being the first big American experience that you remember. And then the growing up singing these songs and having <laughs> these like Disney role models. And then you land a Disney plus show. That's so awesome. Right. It's um, like full circle. How, yeah. How did, how did, how did you get into that? Um, like first of all, with the show. Oh, um, so I graduated from high school in the summer of 2019 and like a couple of months went by and I got this audition and I didn't play basketball, but my dad used to play a lot in the Philippines. He was like, basketball's really big there, right? Yeah. Um, and he, he was like, okay, I'm going to show you the basics. We'll figure it out. And that's he got me through that audition process and here I am. That's amazing. So, and so then being Filipino got you the role. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, would you say you got some skills now? Would you have, you have some handles you, you can do a little bit, you know, now, now after yeah. you know, production and everything. <laughs> um, I say all of the girls and I were actually like, basketball players i wouldn't go one-on-one -on -one with my dad just yet because he's no but um we we know how to play <laughs> awesome so this being one of your first major roles uh first film that you've auditioned or show that you auditioned for and landed and now you know it's getting ready to launch which is amazing um so yeah you you get the acting bug is firmly clenched in now right so uh talk about you know uh how it was you know, learning these lines and uh, and, and getting with your castmates, uh, uh, just how the pre-production was before shooting and some of the stories I'm sure you have from that. Yeah, most of our pre-production process was um, centered around basketball and actually knowing how to play. So I spent basically all of my free time just working with the girls and practicing. And we, during that time, we just, got so close they're like my sisters now because we we spend so much time together um yeah uh let's see but like i i remember our first table read i that was the first day i met john stamos and i i just had this like moment of this whole thing settling in i was like oh what's going on um <laughs> and <laughs> yeah actually the first thing he asked me was if I was Filipino. He didn't even say hi yet. He was like, <laughs> Filipino? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Did, does it, it, um, oh my gosh, it, it slipped. Did, that was, a, it's kind of an odd question out the gate. Uh, that's kind of <laughs> right. crazy and cool all at the same time. Did you know who he was? Were you familiar with Full House? Yeah, I grew up watching reruns of Full House and I really liked the show. And I know the the reboot of it yeah. or like, yeah, Fuller House. I watched a little bit of that and I obviously understood how big John Samos was and I was freaking out when I <laughs> find, found out that he was gonna be in the show. Awesome. So when you got the sides uh, to read for the character, uh, uh, actually let's talk about a little bit of the audition process. This is your, you know, your first big project out the gate. Um, like it just all came together. Can you? What was that like learning, you know, getting this project brought to you and just going through that whole cycle? And then obviously, like you said earlier, you had to learn basketball with your dad. Um, what, would, what would be something you would say in regards to that? And also a, a lesson to impart to young stars that are wanting to be just like you. Yeah, um, I, I've been auditioning. Well, before I got the show, I auditioned for like three years. I got like a little okay. jobs here and there, but... Yeah nothing like substantial mm -hmm. um so I would like I would start with my piece of advice would be just if you really wanted to keep going because this is it your success is like 
you have to meet some sort of luck with it too. There has to be like some sort of, I don't know, you have to keep going in order for this to happen to you, you know? Yeah. Um, but as far with the as far as the audition process goes, I first auditioned for this other character that I didn't really feel connected to. Um, she was just like she was the star player, she was the tallest, and I'm like very short. Um so I was very hesitant to go into the audition um at first, but then I did it and they were like okay, you're not right for this role, but there is this other role that's like the shortest team member. She's like a lot more like you personality wise. And they brought me in a couple weeks after that and it all just went from there. Amazing. And then what did the family think? Just, well, dad was like, okay, now we got to work even harder to, to <laughs> learn this because you got to represent, yo. And like what the family, <laughs> the, the Kabayan, what they they say after this happened? Oh, um, my dad was excited to play basketball with me because <laughs> that's basically all he's known for in the Philippines, that he, he was the star basketball player in, in um, college. Um, so he's like, don't let me down. All my friends are going to watch you. <laughs> I love it. Um, but my mom and I were at the nail salon together when I got the call from my managers. And I was just in a state of shock. I, I didn't want to cause a scene, but my mom was freaking out because she was talking to my tita in um, the Philippines. Um, so she was like screaming with them. <laughs> That's so cool. That's beautiful. I love it. So you're, you, you've been working out, you've been practicing, you've, you've, you've had the, uh, the read-alongs and then you, you're now on set. What was that first day like and, uh, and with the rest of the cast? That was so long ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, our first day was with, um, that was the scene where we met uh, Coach, um, John's character. Um, so I was obviously, as Tisha, I was very excited to meet him and like actually work with him. Um, but, I, and I think that like played really well with uh, the scene. But I just remembered like really soaking this experience in and at first I was a little intimidated just by working with John because he's a veteran actor yeah. and he, he's been in this industry for a really long time. Um, but once I got to know him a lot more, he is just so easygoing and it just, it, he makes it so easy to be on set and work with him because he's just so spontaneous with what he does and he's so free flowing. That's awesome. And I heard you kind of connected over classic rock while on set. <laughs> the yeah. band, the, who created right. the soundtrack to The Last Unicorn, one of my all-time favorite movies. <laughs> what? I right. was jealous. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, yeah, my dad and I, I have basically my dad's music taste at this point. Um, he loves Jim Croce. I love Jim Croce. America, um, Joni Mitchell, like all of those bands and artists. Um, and I told John that and he... It was like, oh, I'm best friends with the band America. Do you want to like FaceTime them? And I went, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I texted my dad afterward and he was very jealous. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Well, I want to get into music as well in a bit because I see also see the instruments right behind you. So uh, yeah, we definitely got to talk that. about music. I want to talk about the show just a little bit more. So oh yeah, 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 I totally. I totally. had not been aware of the show until until today when we, we found out we were going to get a chance to interview you. So I I want you to tell me about the show. Sh sell me the show. T uh, tell me tell me what it's about and why I should watch it. Okay, so Big Shot is about a temperamental basketball coach played by John Stamos, and he gets fired from his job, and he has to figure out a way to teach these private school girls basketball because they're a lot different than college basketball players. Um, it's essentially a show about redemption and really finding who you are along the process of, with like trials and tribulations that life hands you. And I play Mouse, uh, she's the shortest, she's the smallest. Um, she's just trying to find out who she is in life because she doesn't really know. And she comes from a military family, so she's very particular with her ways. Oh, awesome. I love that. that sounds great. I'm so excited to, to check that out on Friday. 
Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm a military brat. I was raised and grew up all over the world. So um, I love that yeah. we get to see Filipino representation. And well, do we actually point out that your character is Filipino or just is that mentioned in the series? I don't think it's mentioned yet, but okay. I mean, just me as a person, I feel like I bring a bunch of They'll Filipino see. attributes to it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Representing, oh. absolutely. Yeah. Do you get to point with your mouth? <laughs> you know how I we tried do. to add that in at one point, <laughs> but they were like, Ooh, what? <laughs> I just ready. shared They're an article. Yeah. I just shared an article about that today because you know, non-Filipinos don't know that. That's just, that's just the way we, over, over there, you know? <laughs> so anyway, um, so can we dig into, so you, you told us a little bit about your character, uh, but it's a 10 issue, uh, 10 episode series, if I'm not mistaken. Do we get to see like this, you know, do we get to go into this arc of your character at all? And how was that? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it's a 10 episode series. Um. It's, Every episode is one hour long, and there's so much that happens during that one hour every week. Um, you see in the first episode that um, my character, Mouse, she is kind of, like, figuring out who she is um, sexuality-wise. Um, and she had this, like, little miscommunication with one of the teammates. Um, and I'd have to say that you definitely see her coming into her own in that aspect um, throughout the whole season. Awesome. Fantastic. I love that. I'm excited. So we get to yeah. have discussions about these kind of topics like that, which some people aren't comfortable with. And, oh, right, cool that we get to own that and we get to good learn for, that. Good for Disney that we're branching out. We're getting to see more diverse stories from more diverse characters. I love it. Accessibility. Right. Awesome. And a Filipino gay character. <sighs> hey. Love that. Yes. Let's it do too. it. Um, amazing. Uh, what was it like wrapping that last episode um uh, before you know and now you're on this press tour because you, the series is launching and i kind of heard a nugget a little bit earlier you know this is season one so we could get season two so i'm like okay i'm excited what's up with that but i know you don't want to spoil anything and i don't want you to get in hush, trouble hush, hush. i know how disney can be i've been on a couple of disney projects myself so if you can just what was it like wrapping at least that last episode on set with this amazing group of girls that you've now you know bonded with and and the rest of your castmates and crew don't, oh, get, don't forget was, the crew because yeah. a lot of love the, for them the crew members they were they were all incredible uh again we all felt like family at the end um especially because we there was this was a long process um making this season and by the time we wrapped um it was a lot longer than we expected um there was a sense of relief but there's also there was also it was very bittersweet because we were so used to seeing each other every single day and I remember turning to one of the girls and was like am I gonna see you again what's going on um yeah. this is weird um but we all keep each other commun like we all communicate with each other we have like a bunch of group chats so it doesn't really feel like we are out of each other's lives awesome awesome Wonderful. and was this all done prior to the pandemic or or did you um, did it go into the pandemic a little bit last year it went on to the pandemic a little bit. We shot the first four episodes before, and then we had to take a little break. Gotcha. So I'm a little bit curious, how was that like, you know, and this being one of your first big experiences, working as an act from an, from an actor's perspective, what was it like pre, you know, pre-pandemic and then to pre adapt? Pre post, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to that. Um, Pre-pandemic, it was everything I could have imagined it would be. Um, I <laughs> invited a bunch of friends over. Well, yeah, I invited like all my best friends over at one point and I gave them a tour of the whole set and it was just so fun. And um, everybody invited their families too. And it was just like, I don't know, it kind of felt like a school gathering in a way. Um, but I, it was such a dream. Um, but post-pandemic, it or like during the pandemic, it was a little bit of a challenge adjusting to it at first because we had to like make sure we had PPE on at all times and like there were all these precautions and it was obviously a very stressful time um but we got the hang of it at the, toward the end of the season and it was really nice to come back to a familiar crew and a familiar like group of people so that really helped and yeah I'm just it's 
it's kind of a miracle that we finished. Awesome. Yeah, I got to give y'all much props with, you know, because it's such a different environment now and we have to adapt to that. So yes, Disney, thank you. And we're getting uh, <laughs> this amazing show. Uh, super excited. So what would be a lesson learned? You know, because I've want i I've been trying to do more lessons learned through these interviews now <laughs> because we have young everyone watching this show and following and wanting to get and, and do what these amazing people like yourself, because you're a big shot now, by the way, um, that are wanting to get into this field. What would be a lesson learned you could tell somebody at this moment now? Wrapping your first big series, uh, at least season one, hope, you know, maybe, maybe season two coming. But what would be a lesson learned from that? I think the big lesson learned is, it, this sounds a little cliche, but expect the unexpected and nothing's really for sure. And you're always gonna have to adapt to some sort of change, um, no matter how sure your path is. Awesome, I dig it. All right, so because like I said earlier, we I see those instruments behind you. And I did get a little bit worried that you're a little bit of a musician as well, and, and then classic rock and just all the amazing artists that you mentioned as well. So you dabble in that beyond just acting and with the pandemic, because we are kind of closed in, can't really go anywhere. I know I've been dabbling into other hobbies. Has, is, has that been a, a, a way to relieve some of the stress for you during this pandemic? Yeah. So bef I've always played the guitar and sang a little bit, um, just like as a way of releasing whatever stress I had during the day. Um, but during the pandemic, I had a lot more free time. Um, and I found this really incredible guitar teacher during this time. And I just got into jazz and I got into like really advanced ways of playing the guitar. And I also picked up the banjo. I don't know, I got really bored. Um, uh, so it's been, it's been really fun. And I'm also dabbling into songwriting and I'm getting really obsessed with it. Um, wow. So I'm hopefully, yeah, I'm hopefully planning to release an EP sometime soon. Hey. Yeah, you Let's will absolutely go. have to let us know. We'd love to promo. We'd love to hear some some music. We love love achievements. Heck love yeah. it. Yo, I have to uh, put a out. I want to put this out into the universe. Um, I don't know if you had the chance to see one of the best Filipino films that dropped last year, Yellow Rose, by one of our previous guests, Diana Paragas, who is a writer director. Um, did you see Yellow Rose? No, I'm waiting for my parents to sit down and watch it with me. Oh, oh my god, you're gonna, I know, you're gonna love it. Oh, you're gonna I know love it's it on Netflix right now, right? Uh, in the Philippines right now, but not in oh. the U.S. yet. So okay. when it, when you can check it out. Um, the reason I bring it up is she, when we had her on the show, she talked about one of her next big projects that she's writing after Yellow Rose It's called Lizards. It's set in the Philippines. I'm not going to give away too much. Uh, you can but it is it a rock opera. That's it's a rock opera. That's, that's what you need to know is that it is a rock opera. And I oh know she's God. always looking to, to, to collaborate with uh, other up and coming yes. uh, uh, Filipinos and, and more diverse. So you know, fingers and crossed. That's what I'm saying. I want to put it in the universe because she's a friend of mine now as well. We're on Facebook and all of that. And it's going to be, it's set in the Philippines with like the gorillas and World War. And, you know, a lot of the gorillas were uh, women uh, in the Philippines. So I think you would be perfect. Yeah, so I'm putting that female into female the universe. Fist. Tisha Castudio you never know. for lizards. You never know. You know, you never know. But uh, I think you'd be fantastic. I can't wait for you to see Yellow Rose. But uh, yeah, just want to put that in the universe. I, I want to cast that now. You know, put, put my bid in. <laughs> Thank you. Tisha, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know? So beyond, beyond that, because uh, I, I know you can make it. I know you, you, you're going to be a big shot. Are there any other projects that you want to talk about as well? Um, but definitely right now, because I'm dropping this on the day of Big Shot is out now on Disney Plus. Go check it out. Uh, Tisha Castudio. So excited. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss or just to be to be continued or anything? To be continued. Um, I mean, I'm just planning to portray more characters that, that have to do with like highlighting important issues that aren't like seen in the media completely. Um, I'm also planning like, this is far down the line, but I really want to start a production company that centers around like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, that centers around uh, immigration stories and like real, real immigration stories, not like fluff, you know? Oh, yeah. You got to see Yolo Rose and I just yeah, got to say. Yeah, love that, man. love that. Oh my gosh. So excited. I love it. Yeah. I have, um, I have a quick question because I noticed on your bio that you're vegan. How has that been? Oh. How, how the vegan 
and the Filipino food. How does how do we make? I'm, I know you got. I know you found a way. How, what is what is the way? <laughs> it's a long story <laughs> <laughs> you can give me the cliff notes I was just it was just something that I was like hmm, hmm. I will have to say um <laughs> yeah this is like a long running joke with me and my friends but my old Instagram handle was the only vegan Filipina um, <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute <laughs> yeah um but I I had weight issues um when I was little and I like started to cut off red meat at first I, it was like a s- gradual wean off so my parents weren't completely shocked but when I g- got to the vegan part of this wean off my mom was like on high alert because she didn't know what to cook for me anymore because all I wanted was like balot I wanted like all these uh, I wanted the no on and I couldn't eat that anymore um so she didn't know what to cook for me but we figured it out <laughs> That's so awesome. what, what you're saying is that we'll also keep an eye out for your upcoming vegan Filipino uh, cuisine cookbook, cookbook right? <laughs> <laughs> if I can figure out a way to cook vegan de nogoan, I will make the cookbook. <laughs> you got to share that with the world. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be absolutely amazing. That sounds, yes, I want all of that. I want all of that. Um, uh, one more more thing that I kind of like had because you talked about you wanting to tell the immigrant story, which I I love. And, and then being that you're Filipino, I'm also hoping that you're also going to, I would assume, talking about like how you came here and then uh, that story is because our stories need to be told. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of us, myself included, are writing our stories um, because they're not being told. So we got to do it ourselves um, and then just get into those power positions that we can get it out there. Um, so uh, is there any story in particular that you know from Philippine history or just uh, just your, are you, are, are you looking just in general to tell a lot from what you've learned coming over for your production company? Um, I would be pulling from my experiences, but also my family's experiences because we're all from the same family, but we all have completely different stories. Yeah. Um, and my cousins are currently trying to immigrate here. So that's, that's been a really interesting process to witness. Um, and I also have a bunch of immigrants uh, that are friends um, that have really, really interesting stories that I, I really want to highlight in media. And interviewing them and trying to find a honorable story for them would be incredible. I love that. It's so needed right now, especially after- Presentation the, matters. Exactly. In the past couple of years with everything that's happened, but I won't get into all that negative. Right. Um, it's so needed. And so thank you. And so, man, you're young talent, uh, <laughs> amazing. I, I can't wait to watch this series. Um, so uh, let's just one last big plug for Big Shot. Uh, why should they check it out for our viewers watching? It's the perfect family show. And- every single person will benefit from watching this because we touch on like really important subjects and we touch on family dynamics and every single character is so distinct and they go through such incredible story arcs and they grow throughout the whole season. It's an incredibly inspiring story. I love it. And we have Mouse here. Tisha Castudio, you are absolutely amazing and you're representing for our people, our culture. So we're going to be cheering you on. You know how we go hard for our people, for our combined. So like oh, everybody, yeah. <laughs> we're going we gonna, to, yeah, we're going to make this, we're going to make a turnout for this. Uh, I'm super excited. I would love to have you back as you progress with your career and your culture and show light and give you love because yeah, man, we, we need it. And uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, let's uh, let them know one last thing, how they can reach out to you online as well. If you uh, you know, have, uh, you know, for your fans that, that want to get a hold of you, uh, how can they hit you up? Um, I'm on mainly Instagram, but I also have a Twitter and a TikTok. Um, I'm all on Tisha Custodio. Love it. Yes. Tisha Custodio in the house, show, pal, show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to back anytime you're part of the show, pal, show family. And you know, we rep for our people, our squad. Thank you so much. Thank you for this. Boom, there you go. Tisha Castudio, uh, AKA Mouse on Big Shot on Disney Plus. That's out right now. Make sure you go check it out uh, after you do this or before this and then watch our interview. I don't know, however you want to do it. Just check it out and rep for Tisha. Uh, that, was fa- that was amazing. A great young emerging talent. What do you think, Kat? 
I love I love to see the up and comers. I love to see young Filipinas doing it, uh, you know, and it was great getting a chance to get in there and in, in, interview uh, the next V-Hudge before she is V-Hudge, right? Hey, there you go. We calling it. We saying it right now. Put it in that, put it out there. Yes. And I love also beyond the just the fact of Filipino representation for our friends that are of LGBTQIA you know, persuasion that that representation is being shown for them too. I love it. We need this. This is 2021. These are subjects we should be talking about right now. Absolutely. Yeah. So super excited for that. We would love to have you back on Tisha if you're watching this, um, but for everybody, yeah, tune in. Check it, check out. it out. Check out the show. I'm going to go check yeah. it out right now. And I'm going to hit up Diane too. Like uh, <laughs> Yellow Rose is fascinating. And if you all haven't seen that yet, go check it out. Um, but yeah, sure. Lizards, she's perfect for that. Wouldn't you say, Kat? Like, yeah, yes. she sings. She's amazing. She's talented. She's an act. Come on now. Let's get her in there. All right. I'm going right. to call her. I'm going to call Diane right now. Yo, Tishka Studio. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, yo. Yeah. This was another great one. Uh, thank you all for joining us as always here at the Show Pal Show. You know, we love y'all. This is what we do for our people. It's for the culture, for the community. And mad love to Tina who couldn't make it today. So we're just going to mess with her. Man, you missed a great one, girl. Sorry. <laughs> yo, Kat, tell them how they can reach out to us and reach out to you and all of that. All right. Um, you can find Cataphoric at uh, Cataphoric uh, you. for Instagram <laughs> and Twitter and TikTok. We also got a show pal show TikTok and you can always support us and find out a little bit more about us behind the scenes by following our Patreon or buying us a coffee. Yes, our Patreon. Um, I uploaded it and you know what? That reminds me, you'll see our show pal show D&D special on oh. there because it's all edited up and I can't wait for you to see the image cat. I had fun pulling oh like our pictures and putting it over <laughs> these uh this you're gonna see it in a sec it's gonna be okay, awesome okay check it out it's so much fun some other show pal show and tells our special patreon mm -hmm. series uh where we have fun with uh, our guests additional clips it's gonna be awesome we really appreciate your support to help us continue giving you this content so please check us out there and show your love uh i am cool yapi you can follow me at strain since 1977 as well as at temple far east here at the show pal show and at the nerds of color our home site of the show pal show and as well as at the nrw where nerds rule the world we appreciate you guys as always it's your boy cool yapi cataphoric viva valentina who's here in our sphere in our universe um in spirit uh, but we love y'all mahakita salamat mahakita din I'm Tisha Custodio, and I'm an actor on the Disney Plus original series, Big Shot, and I will be appearing on the Show Pal Show. Hi, I'm Tisha Custodio in the Disney Plus original series, Big Shot, and my Filipino heritage means to me that I value community, um, and I value my friends and my family, and I will do anything for them. And yeah, there's just this really so strong sense of community in the Filipino community, and I... Absolutely love that.